do you think about this whole exhibit? Maybe I like it. Can you say it again? I like it. It's like just mostly dull stuff. As a developer, you're always looking for that look on someone's face when they're coming out of a device, using a device or whatnot. That look of, of joy and interest, and you know you've got them hooked. That they're interested in something that got them when they're learning something as well as doing something new. And uh, I go around. I look for that look a lot on faces, and I see it all the time in all the sound rooms and uh, different areas. So that's really satisfying to me you know, that I got that look. What was your favorite exhibit? Every day. Voices. I like the um, sound booth with the chipmunks button. I liked it, the one that had the chipmunk. Piano. The voices of chipmunk. I like the synthesizer, too. The goals of the exhibit are the five major thematic areas that we have in there. Uh, dealing with the physics and acoustics of sound. Uh, that area is titled Wave Shapes and Sounds. Also, that lends itself to the second area, which is harmonics or tone colors. Each sound is really made up of a complex of different frequencies. There's a number of devices that deal with that. The third area, patterns, musical math, uh, deals a little bit more with music theory. Scales, chords, intervals, these other things. And then the two remaining areas deal with making music, and one is acoustic sounds, which are non-electronic sounds. And the final one is electronic synthesizers, computer-related things. So we began with over 50, and uh, as most exhibits do, and as we came down to crunch time, we edited out a number. I think there's 28 in there. There's the giant spectrum analyzer and laser oscilloscope. A visitor will talk into a microphone, and it turns their sound, uh, the sound of their voice, into different signals, and the spectrum analyzer breaks it down into different frequency components and it shows how loud each of these different frequencies are. The laser oscilloscope shows the changes in pressure. Uh, another device is a drum connected to a little arm that moves on a moving drum, and it draws a graph of a sound wave, so you can bang on the drum and it translates that pressure change into a graph. The thing connected to that is our nine-foot slinky, and it's an analogy also of air, uh, the energy, sound energy, traveling through air, through the molecules of the air. So the slinky bends, and those are the compressions, and as it stretches, those are the rarefactions. We have a thing called seeing sound, standing waves, which is a variation on the Kunst tube, and that has uh, walnut shells inside of it. That was our solution to the problem. Uh, there have been other. We tried kerosene, water, glitter, all these other things. We have an insonic synthesizer hooked up to it that allows the user to press a key and send a frequency into the tube, and only at certain uh, frequencies do we hit the right resonant uh, frequency to make the shells move, and we get the uh, one node, two node, three node, four node, up to five node pattern in there. And again, this is all related to the harmonic series. Xyloscales, it's a xylophone, an entire octave, 13 keys. And there's templates or overlays that you put on and you start in a major key and you play. There's some predetermined melodies up there, uh, London Bridge, Row, Row, Row Your Boat, things like that. And you play it with the template and you hear the effect of it. Then you change the template, put in a minor, or a Locrian, Mixolydian, Dorian, all these other musical modes. You get to hear the effect of how these modes change the mood of music. Uh, there's a computer program called Melodies, Modes, and Temperaments as well as canon, musical math, and these deal with uh, symmetries in music. Canon, you get a theme, and you pick uh, an imitation for this theme. So it's sort of like row, row, row your boat, it's a round. And you can hear different intervals of imitation, the inversion going a mirror image of the theme, you can hear it going backwards, or a mirror version going backwards, with, which is two levels removed, but that's the most abstracted form. The melodies, modes, and temperaments uh, are interesting in that you can pick something like the Star Spangled Banner, which is in a major key, and hear it in a minor key. It sounds like a funeral dirge. Also, we have a violin, uh, which you can bow a violin, and we have a slot down so you can finger the string, change its length, change its frequency. You can do, for those who know how to do it, 
harmonics, which is lightly touching the string. I haven't seen too many people really trying that, but that's an interesting feature of lightly touching the string at the right point, the two-thirds or the half or three-quarter point, and you can generate some higher tones called harmonics. My favorite is the jam room. Uh, that has a lot of possibilities for interaction. It consists of a synthesizer, an Insonic EPS sampling synthesizer, as well as a drum pad. So those are two things that you can go in there and play drums or play synthesizer or go in with someone and try a little duet if you have some musical ability. Even if you don't, and I've heard people try it, I can get a bit cacophonous in there, but people are having a blast and there's something of value to that. Also, there's a computer program called Music Mouse that's a really simple thing. It was a delightful sort of solution to how do we get people uh, who have no skill physically, dexterously, yeah, you, you at fill in the blank, <laughs> using your fingers uh, to make music. Uh, the solution is a program that uses a trackball with an Apple computer called Music Mouse and you move the mouse around and it triggers notes via MIDI on another and sonic synthesizer and uh, that's one of the more fun ones. I've seen four-year-old kids in there engrossed and just playing. I've seen 60-year-old kids in there uh, doing the same thing. Well, isn't there a particular one that you really like? I liked it, the one that had the tick month. She liked the um, sound booth with the chipmunks button. She was singing all her songs with the chipmunk button and it really was neat. The final electronic thing is a, is a really fun one. Um, I don't know that most people discover much about transposition. It's called the pitch transposer. Uh, and what it does, it's another digital effect uh, unit that changes your voice, changes the harmonic content of your voice. And you can sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks or Darth Vader. The sound stage is a really interesting component also. Uh, what we've done with it here is we have workshops uh, where they build musical instruments and do things related, uh, learn about concepts of different lengths and the frequencies that they produce different tension things like that. I should mention also uh, Remo Saracini's giant 16-foot keyboard, uh, which some of you may have seen in the movie Big, uh, with Tom Hanks. And basically it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's very little science to it. It's really just a kinesthetic thing of making music and dancing. And I never tire of hearing chopsticks or heart and soul. Uh, we get a lot of that up there. People seem to really enjoy that. Wow, this is great. I've never seen anything like this before.